Oh, hi again. I forgot to tell you this in the last video. Um, did you guys see what happened? This is Friday, I'm recording this. This morning, I guess it was still dark out. And there was at that 7 Eleven um, down in, it's just the 7 Eleven in uh, Broomfield somewhere. Can't remember where it was. There was a guy pumping his gas in the middle of the night, like 3 a.m., smoking a cigarette. Right? Idiot. And you know how when the gas fills up, it like clicks off? Well, apparently that was broken. And when this car got filled with gas, gas spurted out into his arm and ash from his cigarette fell on his arm. You know, it's like on fire running around this gas station in the middle of the night. Somebody called the cops. Cops pulled up, shot him dead. Well, he was waving a firearm. I told you I was going to tell you a joke. Okay, let me make sure that the board is lined up. Uh, after my little spin around move. I hope that was funny and not annoying to you. Uh, happy Tuesday. I'm still in the same clothes I was in uh, for the last video because it's still Friday for me. All right, yesterday we did standard form of a linear equation. Today we're doing slope intercept form of a linear equation. This is a big deal. This is the most common one out of all of the ones that I showed you the other day. And it is the most important one. It's the one that dives into so much more stuff that's coming up in your future high school career. So we did the standard form on Monday. We're doing slope intercept form today. Are you going to get ready? Because today is huge. It is a big deal. I can't emphasize that enough. We talked about this. We know standard form from yesterday is AX plus BY equals C. Today we're going to learn slope intercept form. In January, you will learn point slope form. And each one has its own superpowers. So, I know you know this because you've learned it in, uh, not elementary school, in middle school. You may not have learned it, but I know you've been told it. And that is y equals mx plus b. That is called slope-intercept form because the m, the coefficient, the number on the x, will tell you what the slope is. And the b, the number that is by itself at the end, well, it doesn't have to be at the end. It's the number by itself that doesn't have the x, will tell you the y-intercept. And so if you notice right here, the B value is simply that dot where it crosses the Y axis. The Y intercept. Intercept means to cross over. So that's where that crosses over the Y. The slope, the M, is going to tell you the tilt of that line. It's going to tell you whether it's steep or flat or uphill or downhill or totally flat or totally vertical. And there's a lot of different options there for it to be. So let's dig into it. Again, we talked about the skeletal structure here. And we've got these ones that it does look like. You take y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. That's the obvious one. This next one, just because they're negative doesn't mean it doesn't work, because we can write that as plus a negative 5 and plus a negative 7. The m would be negative 5, the b would be negative 7. This one is y equals mx plus b as well. It's just that the m is now 7, the b is 0 because it's not there, and of course the m can also be your favorite thing in the world, a fraction. None of these match y equals mx plus b, so they can't be linear. Or they, well, they could be linear, but they can't be a linear function in y equals mx plus b slope intercept form, okay? This one ends up not being linear, this one ends up not being linear, and this one ends up not being linear. This actually is a straight line. It's just not in a straight line in this format. It's a straight line in the format you learned yesterday. Okay, I'll stop talking so much and get into it. All right, so basically this is what I told you. Slope tells you how the line is tilted. Y-intercept tells you where it crosses the y-axis. And so we're gonna actually do this video in two parts today because um, I'm gonna focus just on some of this slope stuff first. So slope is the huge important part of that. And I know you've heard some of these words as well. Slope is using the m as its variable, okay? It's always denoted as rise over run, which can also be noted as change in y over change in x. The reason why rise is change in y is because the y-axis goes like this, and that would be like rising. That would be the y-axis, right? Run would be running, right? And you don't run this way unless you're Spider-Man, you run this way. So you see that. You'll often sometimes also see delta y, 
over delta x. The delta is just a triangle, and it's actually the Greek letter D. And in math and science, it always stands for change in. Okay, so change in y, change in x. You can also get that by going y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. And so the picture of it looks like this. You get your rise, which is how much vertical change there is between two dots. You get your run, which is how much horizontal change there is between the two dots. And the big rule to tell whether it's uphill or downhill is you always ride your bike in this direction. So you ride your bike, that I'm always going to talk about, as if you are reading a sentence from left to right. Okay, so rise is uppy downy, run is sidey sidey. And so if you looked at this picture right here, this would be an uphill bike ride. So we know already that the slope has to be positive. We count, find a nice dot and a nice dot, and we count boxes. There are four boxes for the rise. There are one, two, three, four, five, six boxes for the run. So the slope of that one would be four over six, but four over six is a reducible fraction. If you divide both of those by two, you get two thirds. So the slope of that line would be two thirds. You don't have to just pick two random dots. Your life will be easier if you pick two close dots. And so if you notice right here, I didn't have to pick these two dots right there. I could have picked this dot and this dot and gotten a rise of two and a run of three, which is exactly what we ended up with. So it doesn't matter if you pick close or far away. It's just if you pick far away, you might end up having to reduce your fractions. When I say pick dots, we're talking about picking these lattice points where the line crosses. It can't pick something like this because you're not 100% sure exactly where that is. You have to pick points that are crossing at the lattice points. So on this one, I've already selected a couple. I gave you this one right here and this one right here. We can either go over and down or we could go down and over. It doesn't matter how you make your stairs. This is one, two, three, and this is one, two. So the rise is three. The run is two in this case. But we also know that if we were riding our bike on this hill, we would be going downhill, so it is negative 3 halves. So if the line goes and points this way, it's an uphill ride and it's positive slope. If it points this way, it's a downhill ride and it's a negative slope. Okay, we'll keep going. Find the slope, there to there. Rise is 2, run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to put the rise on the top, the run on the bottom, and we realize this is a downhill bike ride, so it's negative two-fifths. This one, I'm going to see if I can pick closer points because those look pretty far away, so I'm going to use this one. Track, 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 no, 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 no. There's a nice lattice point. Build my stairs. My stairs are two and three, and so this would be two over three, and again, it's uphill, so we would just keep it as a positive slope. All right, it's kind of easy to build the stairs on a picture. Sometimes you need more work to try to see the stairs in a table. And so what we're gonna be doing is going and just looking at this change right here. Since this is the Y, these numbers right here are going to be my rise numbers, right? Because Y is the rise. So from 20 to 14 is a negative 6, from 14 to 8 is a negative 6, from 8 to 2 is a negative 6. These numbers right here are going to be my run numbers. 4 to 7 is 3, 7 to 10 is 3, 10 to 13 is 3. That is good news because we know it's linear, right? The rise over the run is going to look like that, okay? Now, here's a fraction issue for you. If I write negative 6 over 3, is that the same thing as writing negative 6 over 3? And is that the same thing as writing 6 over negative 3? And is that the same thing as writing negative 6 over negative 3? Okay, so this is the same as this. You can just put the negative out front. Is the same as this. All three of these are mathematically the same. This one is not mathematically the same because it's a negative divided by a negative, so the whole thing would become positive, all right? So, 
Negative 6 over 3, that actually reduces, and I can just think about that as a division problem. 6 divided by 3 gives me a slope of negative 2. So the slope of that table is negative 2. All right, let's do it for this table. Uh, that wasn't a mistake you just saw me make. That's 0, 0, 0. That's 2, 2, 2. So the rate of change, we put the y value on top. A student actually taught me this. They taught me this little rhyme, y in the sky, which is their way of remembering to put the y value in the sky on the top of the fraction. So you're going to get 0 y in the sky over 2. 0 divided by 2 means this is a slope of 0. Okay, moving on to this one. That's 3, 6, and 3. This is 0, 0, and 0. So if you do any of these, it's going to be 3 over 0, or 6 over 0, or 3 over 0. Those might look different, but they're actually all the same, and you cannot divide by 0. Anytime you see the 0 on the bottom, you say that the slope is undefined. Okay, Undefined means the slope is actually going like that, or the line is going like that. And you can't ride your bike on a wall, okay? So that's why it is an undefined slope. All right, now we can take that information and we can do it with actual dots like this. We don't need the table. I'm gonna give you two ways to do this. One way that is sort of like the classic way to do it, and one way that is my sort of secret hack. Okay, the formula for slope is this. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is what you usually see people do. And then you have to realize that this is x1, this is y, I don't know my letters, this one is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. And so you would go y2, which is 9, minus y1, which is 5, over x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is 4. 9 minus 5 is 4. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So that would mean that the slope is negative 4 sevenths. And that's totally fine. But I always felt like that was kind of clunky and it made it hard to track. And some students have a really hard time tracking all of those things and putting them in the right place. So my best advice, if you struggle with that, is just to go like this. Even if you don't struggle with it. This, I'm the math teacher and this is how I do it. I go x, y, and I go 4, 5, negative 3, 9. I just put them in a table, and then it just turns into one of these problems, which is way easier for my brain. From 5 to 9 is 4. From 4 to negative 3 is negative 7. I put the y in the sky, and I get 4 over negative 7, which again matches this. It's your choice. I don't care how you do it. Just get the right answer, okay? Uh, I'm going to do this one with the table trick. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 5, 4. It is 5 up to go from negative 1 to 4. It is 3 down to go from negative 2 down to negative 5. If I put the y in the sky, I get that. You can write it like that. That's not typically how we write it with the negative just on the bottom. We usually write it with the negative just out front of the whole thing like that. Okay, so here we go. If the line goes up, it's a positive slope. If the line goes down, it's a negative slope. If it's a flat line horizontal, it's always going to have a slope of zero. And if the line goes vertical like that, then it's called no m. It's not even in y equals n, mx plus b. And we say that the slope is undefined. Okay? This right here would be an amazing thing to write in your toolkit, along with maybe some of those prior examples. All right, we're going to graph some in the next video. Thank you for paying attention.